Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I want to talk about essential craft supplies that you might use. And specifically, I'm going to talk about those craft supplies that maybe never caught your eye. They weren't very exciting, but once you got them, you found them yourself using them all the time. And so these four things I'm going to share with you today are things that I didn't think I wanted, I didn't think I needed, never would have bought for, for myself, but once I received them as a gift, I use them all the time. And these are things I've had for a long time. I would say three out of the four things I've had for a decade. So these are definitely stand the test of time products in my case. Maybe they would be for you too, maybe not. But uh, I just thought it was really funny that these are some items that I never would have bought myself, but I use them almost every day. So the first thing I'm going to share with you is this thing right here, this humongous tape roller. And um, I struggled, for, I still struggle with adhesive, um, but I struggled with double-sided tape and the, you know, the score tapes and different things like that. And I was always running out um, or it would get tangled up or couldn't get it off the roll. It would kind of stick to itself. And um, a viewer Val sent me one of these. She said, I got an extra one. I think you really enjoy it. Um, so she sent one to me as a gift. And this was one of those things where it's like, well, then you got to buy the expensive roller. I think this was about 20 something dollars. And then you got to buy the refills, which if you go to the craft store, the refills are like five to ten dollars for a, uh, I think for like a, uh, maybe five dollars for a single and ten dollars for a two pack. I can't remember. They were, they were more than what my little scotch um, double sided tape rolls were anyway at the time. And so it just seemed like, oh, that's, it's expensive to buy. It's big. It's going to be some expensive to buy refills. And she's like, no, you can get generic refills for it from Tape Depot. And um, so I got it. I started using it. You can see there's some cardboard circles in here because the tape would sometimes slide off. And I saw a tip, I think it was on, um, uh, I think it was the Prairie Paper Ink YouTube channel and she just cut out circles out of like cardboard and stuck them in there and that worked. Um, and so I did that too and it does work wonderfully. And I went to Tape Depot, bought a box of like 144 refill tapes and split it with a couple of my friends that also had these adhesive rollers. And I put Velcro on this side so because I used to have a felt wall that I would stick stuff up onto. But I use this every time I make cards or um, a scrapbook, any sort of paper crafts and it is awesome. And it has been the most affordable um, adhesive because I was able to get those refills for about a dollar a roll because I bought them in bulk. So this is the first thing that was like, wow, how did I live without this? I use it for picture framing um, also. So if I'm doing like uh, putting dust seals on the back of, of uh, frames, if I, even if I need to adhere something to a mat, this is, um, this is I, I don't know if I would consider it permanent though. It is acid free. I get the acid free quarter inch scrapbooking tape, um, but it's so good for so many different projects and so I totally recommend it. If I was to, if this broke and I needed to rebuy it, I would investigate to see if some of the other guns they have take multiple sizes because I think it would be really nice to have one that would take the quarter inch but also take like half inch tape uh, because sometimes you're doing bigger projects. Um, but this was definitely, this is definitely a must have. I use it every time that I craft. The next one was another thing that I didn't think I needed. This is probably one of the first things I got on this channel and um, it is, and this isn't the, the original because I've, I've, this is a, this is a newer version. It is the Score Pal. And the Score Pal, this is the one, this is, they make it for inches or for um, centimeters, depending on where you live in the world and what measurements you use. Um, this is one that has the notches every eighth of an inch. So if you, it's great for like scoring designs and uh, doing really intricate bags and envelopes and cards and stuff. And I use this all the time. It stays in the room of hoard over there because that's where my big paper trimmer is and when I make card bases I make them in bulk. Once my card base stash in here gets low on my card making cart I just grab my uh, heavy duty card stock and I make tons of bases at once. And so uh, I score the full sheet of paper then I chop it down and then I fold into cards. I know a lot of card makers prefer the score buddy that's smaller but I'm going to tell you the funny story about this is that um, so this is the a newer generation. Um, the older one had score marks every half inch. So I was, when I first had my YouTube channel, I was making uh, 
like die cutting templates that they could work with your electronic die cutters. I had a little shop that I would uh, sell those in online. And I had made some, a bunch of different ones for boxes. And one was a, um, like a mailbox. And you need to score before you folded it. And I didn't have a score pal. And I couldn't see myself spending $40 on a piece of plastic, basically. So I took a piece of, um, it was like a scrap of wainscoting, like paneling. And I took a ruler, like a thick ruler, and I Gorilla glued it perpendicularly to the top of the wainscoting. Um, so like the, the wainscoting lines went the other way. And I just took a Sharpie and I made a little triangle on one of the lines at the top and bottom so that I could score my boxes there and it worked fine you had to be careful not to poke your scoring your like score tool all the way or your bone folder all the way through the the cardstock but it, you know it worked all right well the owner of the score pal company and I, I even said that like I don't have score pal I, I think they're too expensive so I'm using this instead the owner of the company contacted me she goes I think your idea is great you uh, you had a quite an you know um, ingenious way to to score those boxes but I'd love to send you my score pal just so you could see and first of all, I was kind of taken back like, wow, she's pretty cool. She wasn't offended that I basically found a DIY to basically rip off her invention. Um, but not only that, but she offered to send me one. And uh, so I got that, oh my word, game changer. Not many things in the crafting world would I say is a game changer, and that was a game changer. Uh, I loved that thing, I used it every day. And then when the newer version came out, she offered to send me the newer one, and the newer one had um, this mat here, it's a cutting mat that you set right in the score pal. So that's, I really like that too. And the score buddy, actually I have a score buddy in here. Cause if I just need to make like one card, like a gatefold, I'm just making one, I'll use that. But I do, I do think that the big one is more useful, but I'll show you what I did. So I have the score buddy. It's in a little case. And a lot of card makers say this is the one that they use all the time. They don't use the big one, but I, I use the big one. Um, but so I had this other little little mat and I keep it with it because it, I really loved having that mat to go with the score pal. So if you have any scoring board, I highly recommend getting a cutting mat that will fit in there because then if you've got that big thing out on your table, you can work on top of it. You don't have to set it on the floor or anything. You can have it all out. But um, so I do have this in here. I don't use it. Um, I don't use it that much, but you know, it, it's nice. A lot of card makers prefer it. So I thought I would show you that just in case you're um, you don't have space for that or you want a less expensive option. Um, they also have this tool here for making envelopes with your score pal, which um, I think I would have used that a lot early on, but because I have um, the uh, envelope punch board and I also have a ton of the rip and flip green sneakers templates, I tend to use those um, before this, but the, but the regular old 12 by 12 score pal in whatever type of measurement you prefer, that is, uh, for me, that was a game changer. I don't know, it might be for you, it might not be. I don't know, I haven't used any other brands, so uh, I think they're all probably fairly similar, but um, Scorpel will have a near and dear spot in my heart. They also have on their website a uh, like templates for making boxes and different things like that, so there's a lot of information and support that goes with that, which I think is really fun, because sometimes you just need to make a little favor box for an ornament, or you need to just make a like a thick envelope or something like that so you can find that information. At least you used to be able to. I haven't been on their website in a while, but that used to be there. Uh, they have branched out in other products too, but man, the original Scorpel, you can't beat it. Another one, this is, uh, I think I got this about a year and a half ago, and this is another one of those things where I was like, the paint punk company reached out to me and they said, Can, would you like to try our products? And I was like, I'll try it, but you know, I'm probably not gonna re be recommending this overpriced uh, brush washer until I got it and I started using it. And then I absolutely recommend this overpriced brush washer because it is awesome. It is, uh, I generally work in watercolors, mostly. So um, there's uh, like very gentle silicone scrubbies on the bottom for cleaning your brush. You could, you could actually put paint in this area here, like if you worked in acrylics or something like that, you could squeeze out dollops of paint and use that as a little palette. I don't do that, but, um, but you could do that. But uh, the thing that's kind of nice about this is when you are working with glues or acrylics, something like that, you can take your brush, well, I wouldn't be using this brush for, I wouldn't be using this with acrylics as a watercolor brush, but if I was and um, I didn't have time to wash my brush, I could stick it in here so the, the, the water can, the bristles and half the ferrule can be submerged in the water. So that way I don't leave it in the water like that where the water will get under the ferrule and make my, um, uh, and make the wood swell on the handle and then crack the paint and stuff, which I've ruined many a brush that way. So I like that. And then af actually after I am painting my watercolor or whatever and I swish off my brush, I stick it on the outside and just let it dry like that so that all the water can drip out. Now I gotta say, 
I think you can lay your brushes on a towel, lay them flat to dry, and they're going to be just fine. It's really the leaving them in the water like this that's going to really damage them. But because I have this option and it's just easy to do that, I do that. And uh, so it's kind of like brush care for dummies. So this is like 30 bucks. It's not cheap, but I use it all the time. Um, I'll show you what I used before this because I actually used that since I was about 14. This, in fact, this actual one is was this brush bin. This is a Lowell Cornell brush tub and I like it because it's divided and you have uh, space for dirty water and space for clean water and it does have ridges for getting the paint off your brush. It's not silicone so it's a little, it's hard plastic so it's a little bit uh, rougher, but I've never damaged a brush with it, so uh, for what it's worth. And then you've got these for staining your brushes right side up on the outside if you want to, but then the paint could essentially drip back down to the ferrule, which I don't think is a huge deal, but um, it's not like letting your brushes soak in water. Uh, but I did have the habit of letting my brushes soak in water here, and also I can never get clean, like the bottom part and the ridges, like I can never get that really clean, and then ever a while, after a while, it smell kind of funky, so um, this was good, but not as good as the, the paint puck in my opinion, but I did like that it was divided. So I still keep this because I still use it from time to time. As you can see, it's very well used, um, but I feel like that's a, that was a nice improvement on this. Of course, that's way more expensive. I think these you can still find them for around under 10 bucks. So, you know, this definitely, either either one, whatever, whatever you want to do. But I, n I could not, I was just so shocked that I was like, yeah, nobody's gonna, I'm not gonna be impressed by that overpriced, you know, brush washer. But then when I got it, it was like, oh my word, I'm so impressed by this overpriced brush washer. <laughs> so, I mean, I think this is, this is one of those things that would be like, if you're buying it, if you're, if you're spending your own money and you're like, hey, I'm on a budget, I can't spend 30 bucks, you know, these are great. Um, but if you're buying a gift for the artist that has everything, uh, that's really hard to please, one of these, man, you just, they're so good and I feel so silly because I still feel silly when I look at them, like, I can't believe how impressed I am by this thing because seriously, when I looked at it in the catalog, I'm like, I'm not buying that. <laughs> so I just thought that was funny. And you can actually just get the little silicone discs to go in the bottom of any jar if you want um, for the same, like, cleaning ability, which is great. I actually have, um, I usually use that plus a regular just jam jar with a, with one of the pucks because the, the floor of this is kind of, takes up a lot of space. So that's what I do. So the other thing was something I received, it was well bef way before YouTube. Um, it was probably around 2006, I would say I got this. It was a gift. And when I got it, I was like, man, this thing's gonna be expensive to operate. And, um, but it's something I still use to this day and it's gotten hours and hours and hours and hours of use, years and years of use. I've had it since 2006 and it's now like January, uh, just about January 2022, so how many years is that? 10, 14, 15, 16 years is this classic teal Ellison Big Shot. Um, so this this is one of the, this is the original. They have, that company got bought by Sizzix, and now they're, um, I think they're calling them Big Shot, because it used to be Ellison had a Big Shot and Sizzix had a Big Kick, and the Ellison was um, sold through craft dealers, like independent craft stores, and the, the Sizzix Big Shot was sold through like big box um, stores. So you'd had, you would get these from like a, a dealer, and the other ones you would get from like a, um, like a big box store. This thing is heavy. It works great. Um, the only issue I've ever had with it was this little, little screw here. It gets loose every once in a while, so I have to get an Allen wrench and, and put it back in tighter. I did get a die stuck in there once, but I was able to loosen things up and get it out. And um, it's just still, it's still kicking. Now, when these came out, there weren't like the really thin metal dies. There were wafer thin dies, but they had like a full coverage um, back steel piece and they usually had injection foam on them. So I did have to get, uh, eventually get some, a, a thicker platform for it. Um, and also like the rollers get loose over time, get loose over time. So, you know, there, I have less cutting pressure in the middle, but man, this thing is still going strong. It's pretty crazy. It's not the best for cutting intricate dies because it is like, it's had 16 years of hard use, but, um, but it's it's great now. I'm not sure. I don't think I would replace it if it broke because I do have a backup little. Um, I think it's called an Epic Six. It was um, back when the letterpress machines came out. I wanted a letterpress platform, and there was a, a set that had the die cutter, the letterpress platform, and a set of dies and letterpress plates. It was clear and steady. See more for like forty dollars. So the letterpress platform itself was going for forty dollars. So I bought that and I figured I get a backup die cutter if something happens to my big shot, and that was. That was like 10 years ago. Um, 
So, uh, so I do have a little backup that I would use. That one's actually better for intricate dies, but it takes more cranks to get it through. Um, so I don't like using it as much, but, um, but that was a surprise. I was surprised at how much I would use it. So, because when I got that, I didn't have a big crafting budget and I would buy dies at like, uh, AC Moore or Joann's with a coupon. And I would think really long and hard about what I was going to get like that month and I would use because they were like $14 and I would use a coupon and get it for half or they might have been eight if they were a smaller one. Prices have gone way up on dyes, on the thick ones anyway. And I mostly bought thick dyes and the thick dyes, I have all the thick dyes I've always had because I bought alphabets and numbers. I got some like alphabet sets for like a couple bucks on custom crops when they were clearancing out of those thick dyes because people weren't using them anymore. Um, I'd get basic shapes like tags and um, things like that. I actually just hit a sale this summer at a, th a thrift store and I got a bunch of big dies um, for like three bucks each and they were really nice designs, really um, nice things that you could use over and over again. Um, and I have like a shoe box full of the wafer thin dies. That's it because I find that I use the thick dies more. They're more useful and they cut through more surfaces, more types of materials. And um, yeah, it's surprisingly been a great, great tool. I used it mostly for scrapbooking at first and now I use it more for like um, cards or like I always use it for craft fair packaging, things like that. And you can actually use that as a little mini printing press too, because you've got that, you know, you just use your, your platform and your plates and you would put your paper in there. You could use it like a printing press. So it's kind of, uh, it was kind of fun to experiment with. And, um, it was one of those things where I would not have bought it because all of the consumables that go with it, like, cause it's not just the machine. You need the machine then for every shape you want to cut out, you need to buy a physical die for that. Um, and embossing folders weren't a thing back then either, so you didn't even have that capability from those machines. But now you can find embossing folders pretty cheaply. You can even find dies pretty cheaply now. Um, I don't have a huge selection of dies just because I don't. I, I'm very uh, I'm very reluctant to give up much space in my room of hoard. So if I'm gonna buy a die, it's gonna be pretty useful and something I plan on keeping for decades, basically. Uh, Embossing folders though, they're small. I love those and I have a big crate full of them. I should use them more. So that was another thing uh, that I that I wouldn't have purchased because I, I always, I have a hard time looking at products. I wanted them to buy it. I always think of like, how much is it gonna cost me over the lifetime of it? And if it's something that I think is gonna cost a lot of money over the lifetime of it, a lot of times I'll pass. But, um, but that, you know, you could spend wisely and really get a lot of use out of it like I have with that Big Shot machine. And I really was surprised because I didn't think it would be something that I would really use that much. And it's definitely not something I would have purchased because of the cost of the individual dies. But I'm glad I have it and uh, and it gets used a lot. So what are your must-have crafting supplies? What crafting supplies have you been surprised by? Something that maybe you received as a gift or you thought was a gimmick until you got it and then you realize you're using it all the time? I want to know. I want to know what your must-have ride-or-die supplies are. And it's always fun to see to, to, to learn about those things that might not catch your eye in a store, but turn out being super useful. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was just a little bit of fun. It was an idea I had when I was, um, when I was uh, taking the dog for a walk the other day, and I thought that um, it might make you look at your supplies with new eyes and maybe get a little more use out of those things you bought and paid for. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And until next time, happy crafting.